Hi, this is group six. My name is Alina and together with Eliezer and Leonardo, we are going to present our project proposal. Our project is called 3D Printed Prosthetic Hand. A significant number of amputees and children born with missing limbs need prosthesis, but existing prosthetic limbs are either unaffordable or they do not implement all the needed functionalities. The goal of this project is to develop an open source 3D printed prosthetic arm that uses electric muscle activity as a source of control. Two characteristics of the arm will be taken into consideration affordability and scalability. Our proposed solution is a system that will consist of a 3D printed prosthetic arm that uses an Arduino microcontroller to receive and process information coming from electrodes attached to the skin and to move the arm according to the incoming signal. A socket with integrated myoelectric sensors will connect the user's residual limb with a 3D printed arm. The myoelectric sensors that we are going to use are called MyoWare muscle sensors. They measure muscle activity through the electric potential of the muscle, commonly referred to as electromyography. The output of the MyoWare muscle sensor, a rectified and integrated EMG signal, is received at an analog pin of the Arduino Nano, which in turn will convert it to a digital signal. Depending on the range of the digital signal, the microprocessor will rotate certain servo motors, which translates into a movement of the arm. The entire system uses a power supply designed to be affordable, but it still provides enough power life. The servos, the microcontroller and the power supply will be placed inside a 3D printed arm, which in turn will be connected to the socket. An Android app will communicate with the arm via Bluetooth in order to make the calibration process easier and to offer a way of displaying the battery life. Here at the left, we can see what Alina has been speaking about. The circuit is made out of an Arduino Nano, a battery supplier, and a MyAware sensor which would need to be connected to electrodes in order for it to work. For the circuit, for the actual circuit, more MyAware sensors will be used to be able to read better signals and more servos to be able to move more limbs of the hand. Here is a block diagram of the system and its corresponding subsystems. The 3D printed arm will be the housing of all of the components and circuits. The socket will be integrated. My aware sensors will connect the arm and to the patient's residual limb. The Arduino Nano will be used to read the analog input from the sensors and will also act as a voltmeter to read the level of battery. The later will be transmitted via UART to the Android app. The electrical signal from the sensors are processed by the Arduino and based on different ranges. The servo motors are moved using pulse width modulation. The Android app is also used to calibrate the system. The socket shall be made from a flexible material in order to avoid irritation or skin damage. It will keep the prosthetic arm attached to the body by using an airtight seal. The MyAware sensors will be attached to the inside of the socket in order to make contact with the user's skin. Also, the system will have power supplied to provide power of the microcontroller and servo motors. When designing the power supply, we will take into consideration both cost and life of the batteries. Knowing the two inputs, the microcontroller is the processing unit of the entire system. It will read and convert an analog signal coming from the myoelectric sensors. Specific frequencies of the signals will be transformed in degrees of rotation 
so the servo motors will move the 3D printing hand accordingly. Algorithms will be designed and implemented to translate the signals into movements. These movements will be made by the servos. The servos are controlled by the by sending an electrical pulse of variation width or pulse width modulation. Through the control wire, the pulse width modulation sent to the motor determines position of the shaft and based on the duration of the pulse, the rotor would turn to the desired position. Our servos will be programmed to turn based on the incoming signals from the myoelectric sensors. All of these systems together will make possible move will make possible the movement and control of the prosthetic arm. Here I will be showing uh, some of the tests that this arm uh, that the prosthetic arm will have. The prosthetic hand can be in the off state while recharging and will transition to the active state by the press of a button. If the system of the if the system will be inactive for more than a certain amount of time, the robotic hand will switch to an idle state to save power. This time it could be uh, customizable. Whenever an electrical activity is detected from the input sensors, there will be a transition back to the active state. If the system is idle for a long period of time, there is no input from the myoelectric sensors, then the hand would turn off. To prevent short circuit or other damage to the system, the system would turn off under certain unsafe circumstances. I'm going to talk now about the microcontroller subsystem. The microcontroller is the processing unit of the entire system. It will read and convert an analog signal coming from the myoelectric sensors. Specific values of the signal will be transferred in degrees of the rotation so that servo motors will move the 3D printed arm accordingly. Algorithms will be designed and implemented to translate the signals into movements. The microcontroller of choice for this project is the Arduino Nano, featuring an 80 mega 328 processor. The Arduino Nano can be powered via the mini USB connection from an unregulated external power supply at pin 13 or 5 volt regulated external power supply at pin 27. Each of the 14 digital pins on the Nano can be used as an input or output. They operate at 5 volts. Each pin can provide or receive a maximum of 40 mA and has an internal pull-up resistor of 20 to 50 kilo ohms that are disconnected by default. In addition, some pins have specialized functions. Pin 0 and 1 uh, are used for serial communication. Two pins 2 and 3 are for external interrupts and pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 can be used for pulse width modulation. The Nano has 8 analog inputs, each of which provide 10 bits of resolution. We chose the Arduino Nano because of its small size and it is easy to use. Uh, the Arduino is an open source community that provides a lot of free libraries. The microcontroller and the rest of the circuit needs to be integrated inside the, 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 prosthet the prosthetic arm and will communicate with the Android app via Bluetooth. Another subsystem is a user-friendly app. Um, an application will be designed and developed. The purpose is to provide a way of calibrating the prosthetic arm to display the battery life and to give warnings when the prosthetic hand is not in a safe state. A set of files with clear instructions on how to print, build and calibrate the prosthetic arm will be provided inside the app. The app will also serve as a user interface. When the user chooses the, the calibration mode, 
he or she will be given clear instructions on how to place the electrodes, how to flex and deflex the arm. Since the application communicates with the prosthetic arm via Bluetooth, the data collected during the calibration process will replace the previous minimum and maximum input values needed inside the software. Upon a reboot, the system will run using the new values. The component used for Bluetooth communication is the Bluetooth module HC06. The HC06 is designed to transmit data between a microcontroller and a Bluetooth device via a clear wireless serial communication where data is received in the same way it is transmitted. The serial communication on Arduino Nano operates on the UART port and uses digital pin 0 and 1. We are going to connect the HC06 Bluetooth module to the RX-DX pins of the microcontroller and the module will transmit and receive data to and from the Android app. In order to design the application, a free mock-up tool like Balsamic tool will be used. The actual app will be created with the MIT App Inventor 2, which provides an easy-to-use platform for designing and programming Android applications. Bioelectric subsystems. The way the minor wearable device works is that it takes a signal from the muscle, electric impulses, processes the signal, and sends an output to the Arduino. The way we want to work with this is through the muscle compression that the patient is going to have. Basically, when the patient compresses a muscle, the electrodes start reading a signal and it sends that signal to the Meyer wearable device. This device processes the signal and sends a feed, uh, um, an output to the Arduino. The Arduino, in this case, produces the output, which is gonna be uh, set to a range of the uh, values that you get from the muscles. And th that, that output determines uh, how the patient is going to be able to open or close the hand. If, for instance, the patient has a high value, it means he wants to close the hand. If the muscle is relaxed and presents a low value, then it means to close it. Same process for the wrist. In our case, we're working a way to, to make the wrist move and in, in an ergonomic way that the patient is able to have certain angles within the opening and closing of the hand. And uh, that's gonna take some testing first. But uh, for now, uh, we're sticking to uh, analyzing the signals and creating a range, uh, a proper range where the patient can open and close and, and calibrate the, the the device by himself so that he's able to uh, operate the hand correctly. Through the printed arm system. The main idea of developing uh, 3D model of the arm is that it can be an open source for anybody who needs it. In this case, we want to develop a model that uh, whoever needs the hand can adapt it to themselves in, in terms of expanding or shrinking the, the hand. And our for our purpose, uh, we're going to build three phases. The first phase is the hand, which is going to have uh, between five or six um, servos to control each finger and one might have two servos in it for the thumb to enhance more mobility. The wrist, which is going to have two servos to be open to, to be able to move it in two directions. And the forearm, which is going to have the wiring and the cushioning uh, for the patient to be able to wear it. So in our case, for the very first weeks, we're going to be working on the hand. After that, that's going to be called the first phase. After we're done with that and, and able to work with it, we're going to work on the wrist, which is going to be 
most likely the most complicated part. Then afterwards, we're going to develop the forearm, which is the uh, closing area for all the circuitry and um, biggest um, servos. And the final production should be able to have a well-detailed arm that looks good and, and works um, accordingly to our plan. Task schedule and timeline. For our group, we're going to be split in three, three phases. Leonardo is going to take over the 3D design. He's an electrical engineer. That's myself. And pretty much uh, we'll be designing the 3D models and helping with the circuitry as well. Eli will be developing the circuitry. And Alina is going to be developing the software. So the way we break this down is uh, for Leonardo to develop three phases of the model. Uh, the, the first phase is going to be done uh, at least on February 1st and should have a printed part and ready to, to be assembled so that the circuitry can be installed. That's when it, Eli comes in and has to have some, some sort of sketch of the circuit by January 18 and develop the circuitry and test it by February 1st. All, all, all our group is gonna work together on this. In Alina, after we have assembled the, the first stage with the circuit, uh, is gonna be developing the software and troubleshooting it to see if it works correctly. Uh, it does have some, some dependency on one from the other, but um, it will work all together. The second stage will be delivered um, by February 22nd, along with the NETS circuitry uh, development and the software that comes along with that. Everything relies on the on the face of the other, and for that, it's imperative for us to to work together and and on schedule so that we may be able to finish our product by April 5th. The third stage is going to be de delivered on March 15th in according to our schedule. Uh, so there's going to be some testing being done on, on it and along with uh, creating a, a list, an average of testing so that we can use that value to compare it to to the patients and have uh, a way of guiding us to see how to calibrate the arm. Eli is going to develop uh, the circuitry by, by March 15 as well. And Alina should be able to work on the software a week before on March 8. But by March 15, she should be able to, to test it and troubleshoot any errors that it might have. After March 15, uh, I myself uh, should develop the final 3D touches to the arm, uh, anything that needs to be changed and at least make it aesthetically good looking so that we can print the final arm and assemble it by April 5th, two weeks before delivering the final product to the professor or the university. Eli should be working on any errors that the circuit might have, any power outrages or um, the problems that the connections might have. Uh, that should be done by March 29th and assemble the final circuitry by April 5th as well. Alina, uh, since she finished off the third stage by March 15th, should be only testing for errors and troubleshooting anything that might come up for later on and developing uh, user-friendly software so that it can be easily understood by anybody. There is, uh, however, a dependency on the 3D models 
and the circuitry design for her to work, but uh, she will be coming along as well to help with the circuitry or provide ideas or, or help in any way she can. Uh, for that, uh, we should be done with our arm by April 5th and giving us enough room for before the final presentation, which should be on May 1st. Uh, with that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much and hope you enjoy our new prosthetic uh, robotic robotic prosthetic uh, design for engineering design too. Thank you.